I do think, though, there's actually uh, one potentially more impactful system coming to Solana in 2024, um, which are token extensions. Uh, and so token what extensions <laughs> are the uh, so so the the original name of token extensions was the token 2022 project. Um, this is a new token program with a whole new set of token standards coming to the network. It's on it's on testnet now and it's rolling out um, on mainnet in January. But this brings a whole series of optionality and, uh, you know, system improvements that businesses and, you know, users can use to build entirely new types of token experiences on Solana. So one of the pieces that, uh, you know, token extension supports are confidential transfers, which uses zero-knowledge systems to say, if you and I are transacting, someone can see that we transacted and they may be able to see that, you know, the currency we transacted in was USDC, but they're not going to be able to see the actual amount of tokens that were transferred back and forth. Um, so that's really useful for a lot of different applications. But some of the coolest things are actually frameworks that are really important for compliance. So uh, you know, there's the ability in Token 2022 to do things like install transfer hooks, which means that the transferability of a token is governed by a program deployed on the Solana network. Now, that program could do any sort of thing. It could say, uh, you can't buy this NFT if your wallet has only been created in the last seven days. It could say, uh, you know, hey, I, you are only allowed to interact with this token if you have this other NFT in your wallet, right? There's all sorts of different rules that someone designing a token uh, could build to really manage how that token works and performs, um, you know, in the world. Uh, these are really important components for things like stablecoin issuers. Um, that need to be able to comply with sanctions law. They need to be able to, you know, potentially in you know the EU with MICA coming out, um, you know, have KYC requirements on all users that hold that stablecoin. But the nice thing about this is it doesn't actually require a fully centralized management system for allowing token transfers and movements, right? And so this is really a whole tool set that's designed to meet the needs of businesses trying to bring real world assets on chain, whether that's tokenized funds, tokenized farmland, carbon credits, treasuries, uh, stable coins, whatever it, it might be. So, yeah, this is quite interesting because like this is something I heard about uh, a few weeks ago at least, but uh, it didn't get really like a, a deep attention from me. Um, yeah. You mentioned some of the use cases like in your opinion, what would be like the biggest use cases for token extension? Like what, or at least what, yeah. what excites you the most when it comes to token extension in terms of use cases? So today you hear more and more about this idea of permissioned environments. And so a permissioned environment is, you know, the idea of like, oh, well, you know, we need a private version of, you know, a subnet of a specific type of network. And we're going to be able to, trade certain types of securities, like true real securities on that network um, because it's permission that we can KYC every user. And that's kind of the thing you hear today. But if you have to go into Phantom and you have to change your network from Solana to like JP Morgan Exchange, right? Or go into MetaMask <laughs> and change it. No one's going to do that. The whole experience is going to be clunky. You're going to fragment liquidity. And so one of the really powerful things about token extensions is it lets people build basically a permissioned environment on the Solana mainnet. And so that means that you can go to Jupyter Aggregator, you can go to Mango Markets, you can go to MarginFi, you can go to all of these DeFi marketplaces that folks know and love, and you'll be able to actually interact with permissioned tokens if your wallet is approved to interact with them. So if there's a company that's, let's say, they're, they're, uh, there's a, you know, an apartment building in Paris and it's been bought by this company and they're tokenizing it, right? They're fractionalizing the ownership out. There may be a requirement that says, hey, you need to go through KYC with us to prove that you're a French citizen and that you, know, you meet certain income requirements. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the securities <laughs> laws are in France. Um, but if someone does that, yes. <laughs> but if someone does that, they may be now allowed to actually buy and sell and trade uh, their fractional shares of like an apartment building uh, fully on chain. And they don't have to go to some custom application on some custom network to be able to do this. They can do it right alongside, you know, trading dog money and other meme coins and, and all those sorts of things. And so I think that's actually a, a really big unlock because 
the last thing people want is sort of to be carved out into one little side of Solana or another network and say, okay, like you can trade, but only here, right? Um, there's a lot of applications for game developers as well to say something like, hey, you can actually only um, buy items uh, in our game if you're actually a player, right? You have to play at least, you know, two hours a week in order to be able to buy and trade items. Because what we don't want is we don't want a bunch of, you know, basically private equity guys coming in and buying all the rare items and then selling them Not back sure to real Not sure if it will players. change, but at least that would be possible. Yeah, right? I mean, like, yeah, again, who knows if the games are going to want to do that. <laughs> but it would allow these sorts of things to be possible. It would also allow a user to say something like, hey, I really want to swap my, you know, threshold Bitcoin for Soul, but I want to make sure that the people I'm transacting with are all known. Now, this is not something you actually hear that often from hardcore crypto folks, but, you know, with more of the conversation around illicit finance, you can basically, you could see someone saying, hey, I know that, like, illicit finance on crypto is not that big of a problem, but... I really want to make sure that when I'm doing trades on chain, I'm not interacting with anyone who's in North Korea. I'm not interacting with anyone who, you know, is involved in any sort of illicit finance. So I only want to trade with people who have voluntarily gone through KYC. Right. Okay. So that's, that's now a pool that anyone can permissionlessly create. And so this is really one of the cool things about token extensions. It's not just about giving developers and issuers more power and more control over how they build tokens. It's about giving users more optionality to say something like, hey, I, I know I technically can trade with anyone, but I want to make sure I'm only trading with people who are in the United States and have gone through some form of KYC. And, and that's up to the user, right? Right now, you're sort of forced into a take it or leave it, you know, all blockchain is permissionless, all DeFi is permissionless. But, you know, maybe as a user, uh, you're a politician, you're a public figure, you're Ryan Reynolds, right? And, you know, you want to make sure that you're not accidentally transacting with a nefarious actor. Understood. And, like, is it something possible, like, on all the blockchains? Or is it, like, the first, like, public way to do it? Uh, d did you get some inspirations in any, in, in any way, like, for yeah. this kind of development? So on a lot of other blockchains, components of this exist, but they are built by multiple independent companies that you sort of have to assemble your entire system yourself. And because it involves it's multiple... Not by it's not by default, basically. Yeah, yeah this is basically the, the, the argument going through on Ethereum right now about enshrinement, right? Is basically like Ethereum has no native delegation. Right on Solana, I can say, "Hey, I'm going to take my tokens and I'm going to I'm going to delegate them to this validator, and then I'm going to get rewards for that delegation." Most blockchains have that feature. Ethereum doesn't. And on Ethereum, you're trusting the Lido smart contract or the Alluvial Finance smart contract or some liquid staking provider's smart contract. And and so the advantage of having all of this packaged up into one token program is that wallets, infrastructure, DApps, DeFi all of the things on Solana are going to support it by default because it's all wrapped up in one cohesive token program. And so that's what we think is a really big advantage for, for both developers and users is that they don't need to worry about, oh, is this, you know, something that's going to be supported in Phantom and Soulflare and all these wallets um, because it will be under this one token program design. Uh, you know, you'll basically get full compatibility on day one, or at least within a few months of the token program launching, um, which, is, which is something that doesn't exist on other blockchains today. 